And then I thought, well, I can't save myself. My family's gone. At least I can try to get her home to see her parents before the fire gets here. So I got in the car. I drove you know, 90 miles an hour to get her to her house. She got to her house, and she was fine, but she was worried about me. And I went home. And on the way home, the Lord revealed something to me. He said, Eric, he said, I'm showing you where you're going to wind up if you keep on this road. He said, I'm letting you experience what you're going to experience if you stay on this road. That was when Heavenly Father started working in my life to set me free. That was the first time that my eyes began to be open. But that was only the beginning of the fight. Because I still had these... Uh, do you guys know what soul ties are? When you become connected to somebody? Yes. I had soul ties to this girl. Even though we hadn't slept together, I still had soul ties to her that were very difficult to break. And I still had the ties that were righteous ties to my wife that aren't supposed to be broken. Anyway, I began to search because I was struggling with this battle within myself and I began to search for answers. I began searching for answers about spiritual warfare. How do I get free? I'd spent my whole life in sin. Even when I was a Christian, I still had sins that I seemed like I couldn't get free from. And I started searching for answers. So while I'm doing all that, I'm still teaching martial arts. I was teaching a style called Bakwa. I was teaching uh, Chinese Qigong. I was teaching uh, Aikido and Kung Fu and boxing, all of these different things. One of the things that I taught was called Bakwa. And it was like Tai Chi. It was a slow moving form. But the form that we did, you always did the form in this pattern. You moved the whole form. And when I say a form, it's like a series of movements. You walked around this circle doing these motions, and you would move your hands in certain motions, but you always went like so many times clockwise, so many times counterclockwise, and it was all done very slowly. And I was there one night, and I was teaching, and we were doing this form. There was about 10 or 12 of us there in the class. And while I was doing it, um, I was moving around the circle, and I looked, and I was watching, and there's 12 people in this circle. We've been doing it for 30 minutes, and they're all drenched. They are dripping in sweat. And all we did was walk no faster than this. We did that for 30 minutes, and everyone is drenched in sweat. And you think, wait a minute, how does that happen? They're not working out. How are they drenched in sweat? And now I looked at their eyes, and everyone looked like they were in a trance. And that's supposed to be a good thing in martial arts because you're like, that means that you're, t you're touching the chi or you're getting open to the chi so that energy can fill your body and your mind. Anyway, while I was there, Heavenly Father dropped a little bomb in my head. He said, Eric, he said, what would this look like if you were looking at it from my, pos my position? And I thought, huh, a crop circle, y'all know what crop circles are? They don't look like anything except a mess to the farmer. But to a guy in an airplane, you can see the shape. And Heavenly Father said, Eric, what you're doing, this is what I see. And I thought, well, that's interesting because I've seen that symbol in martial arts before. So I went home and I went through all of my notebooks, things I had been taught, books that I had bought from other martial arts masters, and I looked up this symbol. And what I found shocked me. So I came to my, my class of advanced students and I told them, I said, I want you guys to do some homework this week. I said, go find out what this symbol means. Because you can't tell somebody something. It's better if they find out for themselves. Because then they can't argue because they already found out. So I told them, I said, go find out what this symbol means. They all went home that week, you know, excited about the homework and wanting to impress me with their, their knowledge. And they came back the next week and all of them looked really solemn. And I asked them, I said, share. And we had about eight or ten students there in that class, advanced students. All of them found this symbol in different places. They found it in Chinese martial arts, Japanese martial arts. They found it in the occult. They found it in Wicca. They found it in um, gaming magazines. They found it in witchcraft books and Harry Potter books. and They found it in all these different places, tattoo books. But you know what the symbol means? The sun god. Every single time they found it, that symbol means the sun god. Well, the Chinese say that's what yin and yang, or yin and yang, started off as. You had the center point and the outer point. And that symbol, that may be off, Joe. 
Can you advance it one? Okay, these are my, the little girl on the right is my daughter, Sierra, and the little boy on the left is my son, Connor, and that other little girl is sort of my adopted uh, child. That's my daughter's best friend. But they were the ones that were praying for me. Go ahead and fast forward a little bit more. That's my wife when we got remarried last August. And you can see the difference in my eyes there versus my eyes back when I got the black belt. Okay, go to the next one. I think we skipped a couple. Go forward a little bit more. Yeah, we skipped some. That's okay. Go back a little bit farther, a little bit farther, a little bit more, a little 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 more. There you go. Keep going. Keep going. All right, there. Go forward one. Thank you. I appreciate y'all being so patient. These are some of the other symbols for yin and yang. And I'm showing these to you because I want y'all to start seeing them when you look at things. You'll start noticing symbols everywhere. Go forward one more. That's the same symbol, but just in a different representation. You see the three circles? Okay, go forward one more. There's the same symbol, but in a different shape. What's that symbol called? Swastika. You know, when I grew up, I thought the swastika was a German, like a Nazi symbol. It's not. Do you know the swastika came from Hinduism? It was there for 2,000 years before Hitler was ever even dreamed of. Now, I'm going to show you something. That right there was written by a Chinese man. Go forward one more, Joe. That is a Buddhist swastika, which represents the sun god. Go forward one more. And blow this one up. Do you see right there in the middle? See the swastika? And what is that around it? The sun. In the middle of a six-sided star. And I'm not even going to go into that because we could spend two days talking about that. I'm going to throw that out to you. Before you believe that that Star of David that you see on the nation of Israel is for God, look up where that symbol came from before you believe that. Because the Jewish people didn't use that symbol until 150 years ago. They had never even seen it until 150 years ago. King David had never seen that six-sided triangle. That six-sided triangle is a triangle pointing up and a triangle pointing down, and they are joining. That's joining of male and female energy. That's a yin and yang. Okay, go forward. You can go forward one more. This was the symbol for the style that I developed over the past 25 years. Go forward one more. Again. Okay, that's my wife and my kids. Like I said, they were the ones that were, that were really praying for me. What I want to share with you now is, is what the Lord did to bring me out of the martial arts, out of what I was involved in. Not only was I involved in a relationship that I'd created very strong soul ties with a woman, um, but I had spent 25 years creating soul ties with martial arts masters. I think of a good way to put this. I'm going to try to recognize we have a mixed audience. I think most everybody in here is adults, though. Um, the way that the Chinese say that energy works is to produce something, you have to have a joining of male and female. The Bible says the same thing. Adam knew or was intimate with his wife, and they produced a son. When you think about that, the Chinese always say that energy or chi comes from the man. So you have the female, which is yin, and you have the male, which is yang. The male produces energy, and that energy is transferred to the female. And that, then the female um, nourishes that energy and produces a child. So by joining male and female together, you produce something. The Chinese idea with yin and yang is, is to take male and female energies and join them together in order to produce power or to produce uh, psychic abilities or the ability to do ESP or the ability to push people without touching them. 